Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful God first day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. My friends, I'm excited for the goodness of the Lord and all of the mighty things that God is doing in these here last and evil days, not just last days, but I'm like the old church mothers of, of the temple church of God in Christ, last and evil days, because they are evil, and we're living in the end times, and my friends, in terms of biblical prophecy, everything has been fulfilled for Jesus Christ to come back any day now, or at any time. When he will come, the Bible teaches, no man knows, not even the angels of heaven in heaven. The Bible says not even the son, the father knows. And one day the father will say to the son, go back and get my people and, and, and get them out of this uh, wicked world. And if I'm still alive, I'm going to be amongst those who are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the middle of the air. Now, I want to say this, I want, God is blessing us. I want to thank God for our newest viewers, our new viewers who have found us, our friends out there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of this move of God. And one of the ways that I know that we picked up some wonderful, wonderful new people is that there are questions about the flags that are over my shoulders. And uh, uh, you have good questions. And you know what? They're intelligent questions. They're very good questions. When you ask, you know, uh, this man of God here who is preaching against perversion, he cries out against all things LBGTQ plus at what? And all of the other letters that I'm supposed to mention, it's so many that I can't keep up with them all. And the moment when I think I've gotten them all, they add another one. So how about this? Abomination. It's all an abomination. It's all sin before God. And, and you got to repent. Jesus Christ loves you. He died for you. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be clean. He wants you to live the way he uh, created you to live and all that. So, you want to know why would this preacher, though, who takes the position that we take, why do you have the, the homosexual flags uh, behind you? And the answer to that question is, my friends, I do not have one homosexual flag behind me, not a one. And you, uh, by asking that question, you make my point. What we have done, uh, sadly, in the body of Christ is that we've surrendered. We've surrendered God's beautiful rainbow, the beautiful colors that God made. We have surrendered them to the LBGTQ plus whatever else community, and we should not have. Uh, I say to all pastors and pa preachers and leaders and bishops and all of you, shame on you, uh, shame on all of us who have uh, participated in this surrendering. You've, ra you've waved a white flag of surrender. Not me. These colors are beautiful. God made the rainbow according to Genesis chapter number nine. And God said this in verse 13, I do set my bow in the cloud. It shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. It shall come to pass when I shall bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and uh, you and every living creature of all all flesh. Look at this. And the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Look at this. And the bowl shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it. Look at this, my friends, that I may remember the everlasting covenant, covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said to Noah, this is the token of my covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So that beautiful, beautiful rainbow that you see behind me, it is not the sign 
a sign for the homosexual community. It's not a homosexual anything. God made the rainbow. God put those colors together and every church ought to have them on their uh, uh, screens, ought to have a flag hanging up in the church somewhere and ought to explain it. As a matter of fact, not only do we talk about uh, 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 that rainbow, but we talk about uh, another rainbow that is going to be, oh my, seen uh, in the earth. That's that that's beautiful, beautiful. And uh, that's that rainbow that emerald colored rainbow that Revelation speaks of that's going to be uh, over the head of God in the kingdom of heaven. When we get there, it's going to be something to see. And you can read about it in the word of God in Revelations where the rainbow will be uh, viewed. And that, as a matter of fact, I found it right here. Revelation chapter number four and verse three and says, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And look at this. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight, like unto an emerald, a beautiful greenish colored rainbow is going to be around the throne of God when we get to heaven. So the God of the Bible is the maker of the rainbow. He designed the rainbows and the rainbow reminds him of the promise that he made to us. And it's designed to remind us of the promise that he made to us. And you have to admit God has kept his word for since he put the rainbow in the sky, the earth has never again been completely completely covered with water. The earth has never again wiped out all flesh uh, as it had uh, in Genesis uh, chapter six uh, with the flood of Noah and also in Genesis chapter number one and verse two when, when during what is called Satan's flood where it covered the whole earth. And the Bible teaches that darkness the, was upon the face of the earth, but the spirit Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, hovered above the waters and moved up, up, upon the face of the deep. And then at some point, we don't know when, but the God of the Bible said, let there be light. And bam, that was light. And God began to restore his creation. What? A mighty God we serve. My friends, I am fired up. I pray that you are. And uh, listen, there are just so many things going on here. I have in my hand, you know, the truth is coming out and people are blowing the whistle. This little story right here, whistleblower lifts lid on St. Louis kids gender clinic, morally and medically appalling. And the person who finds what was going on in this St. Louis kids gender clinic, who found it morally and medically appalling, was that person a sanctified preacher? Was that person a bishop? In the Lord's church, was that person an apostle of God? Was that person or oh, someone who has all of the, a supervisor or a, an evangelist missionary or an ordained elder or a reverend or some uh, uh, superintendent or a moderator? A steward, was it? No. The person says, I am a 42 year old. A uh, St. Louis native, a queer woman, and politically to the left of Bernie Sanders. My worldview has deeply sharpened, uh, shapened my career. I spent my professional life providing counseling and valuable uh, uh, counseling to the vulnerable population. Children in foster care, sexual minorities, 
uh, and the poor, children in foster care, sexual minorities, and the poor. For almost four years, I worked at the Washington University School of Medicine Division of Infectious Diseases with teens and young adults who were HIV positive. Many of them were trans and otherwise gender, otherwise gender non nonconforming, and I could relate through. Childhood and adolescence, I did a lot, a lot of gender questioning myself. I'm now married to a trans man, uh, married to a woman, and together we are raising two biological children from previous, from a previous marriage, because you certainly couldn't, couldn't have gotten one from that one, and three foster children that we hope to adopt. Oh, God help those children. All that led me, uh, all that led me to a job in 2018 as a case manager at the Washington University Transgender Center at St. Louis Children's Hospital. And she goes on to talk about how they are destroying children, how that they, they went into it with a first do no harm and they were permanently destroying these children, giving them all the, the, these, uh, pumping hormones into them, which would leave many of them sterile, all kinds of side effects. And this person, this person, comes out and this individual says, I can't take it anymore. But isn't it amazing that this uh, young uh, lady, um, 42 year old, queer woman, politically to the left of Bernie Sanders, she is saying what you can't get a whole lot of reverence and preachers to say about this topic. You know, the Lord didn't call me. God hadn't anointed me to deal with these issues. Well, what issue have God anointed you to deal with? Wokeism, which, by the way, Gary, is the belief that you stand against nothing so that you can accept everything and everybody. The church is going in the wrong direction. Uh, the church in the body of Christ, we are, we are being uh, beaten down by the devil. We are finding other things to talk about. We are allowing God's truth to be uh, kept silent. And I'm, I'm saying, listen, we need to wake up and we need to speak up and speak out. Uh, uh, look at this. This is now. This is part of the New York Post. This is part of the same story. And I'm just going to just read a line. Clinics doing clinics doling out medications to kids demanding gender transitions are permanently harming them in morally and medically appalling procedures with little oversight, according to a former worker, according to this queer woman. Maybe she's been watching the Upper Room, Church of God of Christ. Maybe she's been following me online. I don't know, perhaps, but I tell you what, I say this to her. Thank God for your stand. Thank God for your stand. Now, I'm praying that God will deliver you, praying that God will set you free, praying that the Lord will, will, will touch your, uh, your love and your emotions. You, you probably make a good wife, uh, and, and you might want to leave that trans woman. I, I, I'm not sure what that is. I get confused myself. Brother Gary's here with me in the office. So, Brother, Brother Lee, if she, trans man, that's a woman, right? All right. So, uh, basically, it's a lesbian relationship. Uh, and so, hopefully, you will let the Lord deliver you. Thank God for Florida. I don't know. I may end up living down there one day. Florida College Council Singing Group's concert due to lifestyle lifestyle that contradicts scripture. So there's this group um, called the King Singers. And the King Singers is a group, uh, they're British. Uh, the King Singers are highly regarded, are a highly regarded British a cappella ensemble with more than 50 years of history. The all male group perform a range of songs, including pop music, classical arrangements, and sacred music. Uh, so, this group, 
The group says that uh, a February the 11th concert at Pensacola Christian College was canceled with two hours notice because of concerns about the lifestyle of members of the group. Bottom line is it appears that, uh, that some of the group, or at least one of them, uh, was into homosexuality and they found out about it. And they canceled him. And, you know, the response was the what if? Well, what about this group, this this group that was allowed to sing this classical group and that and the other? All I can say is this. Uh, you ought to hold up the standard regards to who it is. But I want to I want to praise this this school. What if the church world had this standard? <laughs> because it appears to me, you know, you could almost have a singing group now with one straight person in it and and uh, and nobody gets canceled. You can have people uh, uh, like uh, I, someone sent me this uh, a most the most recent uh, uh, comments from Brother Kurt Franklin. Uh, he was talking about uh, and I'm saying brother to be politely polite, polite uh, talking about the Grammys. And uh, apparently he won some congratulations. And of how he he doesn't want to talk about issues, doesn't want he, he he's not worried about biblically, biblic, bibli, biblical, <laughs> centric people. <laughs> well, I guess that's me, because <laughs> I'm guilty and I'm proud of it. And oh, I don't want to answer these questions about whether or not the saints ought to have been at the Grammy and all that. You know, the one with the satanic themes. You mean to tell me that there were Christians in the audience who watch people get up with a satanic theme? Satanic? Lucifer? Your mortal enemy who is trying to cause you to be lost? You mean to tell me that you wanted to be in the Grammy so bad that you would sit in there through that? and enjoy it and there was nothing in you that said uh let's pray now these same people you invite them to your church you invite them to sing instead of singing they try to act like a preacher want to lead you into praise and worship oh god is going to do some things tonight just lift your hand. talk 40 minutes before they sing a song and i'm sitting there thinking just sing i brought you in to sing i got someone else to preach you sing but now you have all that to say at churches but you could you go to the grammys and sit through a satanic a satanic wicked lbgtq wicked presentation and not get up and walk out and then one of the leading voices in gospel music uh, says, I'm not going to talk about that. And, and, and so he proceeds to praise uh, various R hip hop artists and talks about the power of hip hop and all that. Well, I'm going to say something that I said years ago and Brother Wooden has not changed and I'm running out of time. I hate all things hip hop with a perfect hatred. Now, I did not say that I hate hip hop people. I love them. I love all people. But what that genre of music has done before hip hop, black men wore their pants pulled up before hip hop. Uh, our women and men didn't walk around all tatted up everywhere before hip hop. We didn't speak Ebonics before hip hop and these satanic rituals that and, and you know, some of these rappers, you know, these guys that come across as strong. But, you know, when they sell their souls to the devil, a part of the part of the deal, you know, these guys got to have sex with each other. You know, uh, uh, you know, I, what, what's the deal with Kurt Franklin and lipstick and all that? You know, what's the deal with that? Uh, what's the deal with these guys who uh, all these these masculine cussings? Oh, man, these guys, you know, but uh, 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 to get that contract, to get that money, to get that paper. To get that popularity, that notoriety, the fame. Oh my, they will bow to Satan. Satan said to Jesus, all these things will I give you. He showed him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said, all of these will I give you if you would. He didn't say worship me. He said, bow down and worship me. Bow down and worship me. 
The subordinate bows to the superior. Satan wanted Jesus to confess by bowing to him that he's subordinate to Satan. The devil is a liar. And then to worship Satan. Jesus said, I've had enough of this. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. My friends, I'm standing for God's truth. And let me tell you something. You are too. We are out there. We've got to pray for each other. We've got to keep each other encouraged. We've got to uh, uh, continue to lift each other in prayer, find each other, worship together, preach each other. Those of us who are like minded as never before, we must stand together because the enemy is infiltrating the church. Oh, he's coming in unawares in some cases, and he's just walking in the front door of others because some of these, they're so weak. You know, the pastors won't stand for anything. Nothing is wrong. You know, you're woke. Wokeism, we stand for nothing so we can accept everything. Wokeism, nothing is wrong. So everything is right. You know, I hear people say, I, I don't judge. I don't judge anything. I don't judge anybody. Well, you know what you just did? You just called God a lie. You just said that there are no, there, there's, there's nothing worthy of, uh, of passing judgment on. You just said that there's no behavior, no actions, no thought, not anything that is worthy of you trying to discern whether it's good or bad. Even though the Bible speaks to these things. What about the Bible? What about the Bible? What about the Bible? That's what the man said at the convention years ago. Story was told they were trying to pass something in a convention. I won't name which convention. And somebody way at the back. Hey, what about the Bible? What about the Bible? The bestseller of all time. What about the Bible? God's word. What about the Bible? God's love letter. God's word. The word which will never fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but Jesus said, my word shall not pass away. What about the Bible? Kurt Franklin, singers, all of you who are fast, uh, flashing these Satan signs, I'm not going to do it. Flashing these signs of Satan, you three sixes, all these, you know the things that you're doing. And thank God, thank God it's being revealed where people can see what these wicked signs are. I got something to ask you. What about the Bible? And after you've gained all of this world's fame and popularity and money, I got to go. My time's up. I want you to come to church tonight. You're going to die. We're all going to leave here. I am. You are. Your mama. We're all going to leave. And death is not the end. The truth is death is the beginning. For where we go when we leave here, we will be there forever. What about the Bible? The Bible teaches that there's a place called hell. And that hell is for everyone who has turned their back on the word of God, turned their back on the God of the Bible. And oh my, you get down there and go to Bernie. Ain't nobody going to be thinking about how many Grammys they won. How many Super Bowls, how famous they were and all that. Nobody's going to think about that. And I'll tell you something, my friends, if you never get celebrated in this world on the world stage, if the world never knows your name, if the world never throws a parade for you, if nobody ever puts you in a chief seat and tell you how wonderful you are, serve Jesus. For there is a day coming when you will hear the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the only true potentate, the son of David, the seed of Abraham, the stone hewed out the mountain, that meek and humble lamb, you will hear him say to you, well done, my good and faithful, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. And I'll make you ruler over many. That's what I'm living for. I'm living to hear Jesus say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear good and faithful bishop. Good and faithful preacher. Good and faithful fellow. I want to hear servant. 
<laughs> Look, join me tonight for Bible study. Join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Yes, sir. You guessed it. We're going to study the word of God together. And I'm going to talk about some things. And I'm going to talk about, praise the Lord, the importance of of loving and standing for God's truth. And I'm going to be coming from, no, I got to save that. I can't give you everything. So join me tonight. I love you. God bless you. Make it a great day.